Perfect, thank you. All right, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, building a successful API program. Uh, hopefully you can all see my slides and uh, hear me. Looks like that was all confirmed. So today here in this particular session, we are going to talk about what it actually takes to run and build a successful API program. Uh, so this is not a session on REST versus GraphQL versus the use of JSON schemas versus schema evolution, uh, all versioning, all those kinds of things, although they are definitely all related. Um, what we're going to talk about are the main considerations that you need to think about when you're actually building an API program. So one slide about TIBCO. Uh, we're a, a software vendor, been around for a long time, 30 plus years, uh, really focused on three main areas of technology, um, really the ability to connect to any information at any location, be able to expose all that information through APIs, be able to manage that data successfully through the use of things like data catalogs and data virtualization, and of course to apply AI ML against that data. Yeah, so that, that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about TIBCO and what we do. Now, when you're looking at API success, as, as you all know, it's a whole theme of this particular uh, series of sessions, um, APIs are still key to the way organizations are really looking at their digital transformation strategies, whether it's actually to reduce costs, whether it's to streamline operations, whether it's to expose new functions and capabilities and data to the outside world, whether it's to allow developers to build applications, partners to interact with you. APIs are still key to what a lot of organizations are looking at when it comes to digital transformation. Right? So that is still, still a hot topic, uh, still very much a key part of the conversations I have with customers. Although I do have to say that the types of conversations I have with regards to APIs has changed. And we will talk a little bit about that through this particular presentation. I call this my buzzword compliance slide. And you know, when you look at APIs, APIs can really be discussed, talked about, implemented in a variety of different contexts. So I have a lot of organizations now looking at things like IoT. And so of course, APIs can play a big role in IoT and edge computing. How do you access those devices? What kind of API abstraction layer can I put in front of the devices? And you see open source frameworks like the EdgeX Foundry framework uh, from the Linux Foundation as an example. It's heavily based on IoTs, even down to the, uh, on on IoT APIs, even down to uh, the low device level. Right? So that's a key aspect of it. When you talk about all the latest and greatest ways of deploying services, whether it's in a serverless function, kind of arc, as a service architecture, uh, whether it's around service meshes, whether it's, whether it's around straight up microservices, APIs, of course, are a key component of all of those discussions. Typically. How do I invoke the function? How do I invoke the microservice? How do I bundle those APIs together and so on? But as you can see, APIs effectively can fall under many, many different categories. A lot of my conversations when it comes to data and data management are around data as APIs. Uh, and it's also around things like event-driven APIs, right? APIs are not just request reply anymore. Um, APIs don't necessarily equate to REST. So how do you event enable your APIs? And then how do you manage, govern, and control access to those APIs just like you would any other sort of API. Right, so these are all very much relevant. APIs are part of these discussions. Uh, maybe they're not the primary driver, but they're definitely a, a key focus of how these capabilities are being implemented within organizations today. And they're everywhere. I mean, this is a simple example. I've got, I've got a simple web page here, but as you can see, it's nothing but a series of APIs whether you're looking at product information, whether you're looking at the price data, whether you're looking at cross-sell, upsell, AIML models, scoring, whatnot behind the scenes, APIs are driving this particular representation of information to the user. Now, APIs are also driving different forms of interaction now with data. Right, this is your kind of standard approach, but even things like augmented reality or the broader extended reality are also heavily dependent on APIs in terms of how they get the data and how they actually render it to the user through the variety of devices that people now have available to them. And so, so APIs are still key, right? Organizations are looking to implement APIs, as I mentioned, for a variety of different reasons. You got some of them that are actually listed here, but it's not just a technical problem, right? There needs to be a whole API program that underpins the way in which you're bringing forward APIs either within your organization or between your organization and consumers or other third parties. All right, so that's what we're gonna talk about here today. We're gonna to talk about what is that API program. And you know, many organizations have one in place already. Maybe they're looking to evolve it to the next stage. 
Other organizations are maybe looking to formally establish now an API program, and other ones may be quite mature. And so there's still going to be different aspects of what goes into an API program that hopefully all those different audiences at those different levels of maturity can, can draw upon. All right, so we're gonna talk about a number of different areas. I'm just gonna build this out. But when you're dealing with an API program, there's an aspect of monetization, and that can either be direct or indirect. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. How do you actually measure the success of your API program? And of course, one of the ways that you can do that is through monetization and, and measuring the value associated with that. Of course, you need to look at how you staff your API program. Who, who should be part of that program? What roles do you need? You need to understand how to build the business case. And maybe not just when you're first establishing the API program, but when you're trying to establish the fact that the program should continue and either, you know, either along the same lines or even expand going forward. Right? So how do you prove that? How do you understand who your audience is? And how do you build an experience that tailor is tailored to that audience? How do you apply the API lifecycle as part of your API program? How do you know what to build? How are you going to build it? And then how do you set yourself up for the future? Right? So these are many of the topics that you need to consider when you're looking at APIs and API programs. So making money. One of the topics that uh, typically comes up uh, in many ways, uh, it's sort of shifted. At first, everybody thought we could make billions of dollars with their APIs uh, through direct charge. So for every time you invoked an API, you could charge for that and make you know, billions of dollars again based upon that. Uh, that ne isn't necessarily always the case, right? There's other ways in which you can monetize your APIs. And this slide lists some of the other mechanisms. Uh, so for example, you may have a situation where you provide some sort of software capability, some product or what have you. Um, you may then offer a higher you know, sort of level of that software that includes API access. And of course, when you offer that higher level of capability, you can potentially charge for that information as well. Right? So APIs can be all, almost be used to just sort of enrich or act as a kind of an upsell onto an existing software platform. You can, of course, use APIs just to drive revenue generating activities, and Amazon would be a great example of this. Right? So all of the APIs and whatnot that Amazon exposes uh, is, is really almost like a side benefit of what they were building originally. You can use this to structure your strategic partnerships. So I wanna interact better with my, my partners. Um, I wanna interact better with customers, developers, whoever it might be. I can, of course, use APIs to drive that form of monetization. And then in many cases, if you're looking at it from an enterprise standpoint, APIs can actually drive internal operational efficiency. Right? I want to be able to connect my systems sooner, faster, better, cheaper. I want to be able to expose API capabilities so that systems are not accessing the mainframe directly. Uh, I want to be able to package up those APIs and give them to a, a mobile application or a, another channel, a web channel, or other types of applications. It right? could be, again, things like extended reality. They, they can all utilize that core API base. And then in many cases, that'll actually drive out other types of monetization, even if you started with the intent of improving operational efficiency. And so monetization, how you're gonna measure the success of each of these categories, if you will, if, and you, just, you don't have to fall just in one, you can actually fall under a, a couple of these if you wish. Uh, but it's a, it's a key aspect of something you need to, need to consider with your API program. Now, who do you need? And I, I tend to focus more on the role um, as opposed to saying, hey, I need you know, however many circles are on this particular slide. You, you don't necessarily need that many people on your API team. Now, one thing I do talk about, though, is the fact that you should go through each one of these roles and at least decide consciously whether you need that role or not. And so you may assign multiple roles to an individual. You may say that no, based upon the structure of my API program, how it's gonna be measured and the business value and goals behind the program, I may not need every single one of these roles, but you should at least ask yourself if you do. And of course, this can change over time. So as your API program evolves, you may discover that you need maybe more importance on one role or the other, or the priority may shift, or you may need additional support because now you have more APIs exposed to the outside world. And so documentation and samples and, and, and those kinds of things have become more important. But look at the roles. Again, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one with a person, a physical person, but it, it's definitely a role that you need to look at and evaluate and determine what should be part of the, the program. And when you're, I always say for marketing, don't forget about the fact that even if your APIs are only internal, 
you still have to market them. You still have to explain to other development groups within your organization why they're valuable, the fact that they're even there, how they would use them, and the benefits they get from doing so. Okay. So there still is an aspect of internal marketing, uh, even if that's the only way you're currently using your APIs. Now, building a business case. This is always a fun one. So there's this, how do I justify having an API program? How do I make sure that it continues to get the funding that it needs? And I can get the people that I need on my program. Well, one of the ways in which you're going to do that is making sure that, first of all, you're aligning to the business goals of the organization. Okay? There's no sense in having an API program that completely conflicts with everything that the organization is, is focused on. Right? So you definitely need to align to the business goals and, and never kind of forget that. Um, now, of course, those can change for a variety of different reasons, acquisitions, new executive teams, and so on. So you need to make sure that you're always following those goals. There's technical aspects and there's the business aspects. Right? You need to consider both in your, in your API program business case. And, and you really want to think of it as a business model. And as a result, one of the ways that I often work with customers uh, when it comes to actually building this business model is to use something like the business model canvas. Now, this is typically a framework that you use when you're designing and creating and, and almost coming up with the business case behind a startup. And in many ways, you can think of the API program as, as somewhat similar. So you need to look at things like, well, who are the key partners? And what key activities do you need as part of your program to achieve the value that you've identified? What resources do you need? What's the value prop of the program? Who you, are you going to be interacting with? Who are your customers? And over what channels are you going to be interacting with these customers? And how do you group those customers into different segments? Because, of course, APIs that are exposed to maybe a citizen developer could be different than APIs that are exposed to the hardcore open source developer. Right? So that can be different. So you're not going to market to them in the same way um, because you're not going to meet the needs of each of those different segments. And then, of course, you need to look at things like costs. You need to look at things like the revenue streams, cost savings, uh, additional capabilities that it's going to bring. And then I've got a number of, of metrics that are uh, listed there that people will typically use when, again, measuring the success of their API program. So whether you're looking at, you know, how much does it cost to acquire a customer? Uh, what's the average revenue per user, the lifetime customer value, the contract values, the amount of savings, the reduction in development costs, uh, you know, how quickly now you can build new organizational product capabilities, these are all things that you're going to want to decide up front. And I always say that this becomes part of a regular health check. You don't just do this once and say, great, I've got my API program. You're going to continuously do this through regular checkpoints, regular health checks to make sure that you're still aligned with the goals. You're, measure, you're, you're essentially following the metrics that you need to hit. And if you need to make any adjustments, you can do so uh, in a timely fashion. And so having a, a kind of a form of a business case is an important part of a, an API program. And, and as I mentioned, when you're building this program, make sure you understand your audience. If you're selling effectively access to your APIs to external audiences, that's going to be very different than, of course, dealing with internal audiences. But even if you're dealing with internal audiences, are you dealing with the front end mobile development team or are you dealing with the mainframe application support team? Right. That can be very, very different in terms of how you convey the value and the types of services you build that, that kind of back the, the, uh, the APIs that you're creating and so on. So it, it's really around understanding who you're working with, their needs, and then making sure your program has aspects in place to meet those needs. Right. You're, you're creating the best experience for your target audience. Of course, then you go through the life cycle. So you're going to go through from, you know, you have a great idea all the way straight through to when you're deployed your APIs uh, and even thinking about how you're going to deprecate that API eventually. Right? So all these now, this is your more traditional process, right? And, and again, not saying that this is a sequential series of steps. A lot of these things happen in parallel. You're going to test mock applications. You want to test your API contract earlier rather than later. You want to put security in place again earlier rather than later. This isn't meant to be um, a sequential diagram. It's just meant to show that there are different stages when it comes to an API development lifecycle. And things like versioning become very, very important. Uh, the measurement and monitoring of your APIs, not just from a performance standpoint, but also from a business value standpoint. And then those metrics are also going to tell you who's using what, how much, and whether you're actually uh, supporting them properly 
um, or whether you see a, an opportunity where you can deploy and use new APIs in order to achieve, again, greater efficiencies, uh, more revenue, or whatever it happens to be. Right? So it, it's this idea of just pay special attention to these stages um, and make sure that they do fit into the way in which your organization uh, builds software. And, and don't forget the cultural and organizational structure aspects of this. Right, uh, Mel, uh, yeah, Melvin Con uh, Conway, right? Conway's law. Uh, so you build software according to the way your organization is structured. Remember that when you're actually building your APIs and running your API program. So don't shortcut the design stage. Make sure you're building a solid API contract. Look at all the different specifications that are out there, whether it's the schema definition languages, open API specs, the async API spec, and so on. That's going to form the basis of everything else that you do. Right, that API model, that contract is key. Automate everything. CI/CD is obviously very important here. When you think you've automated everything, automate again. Um, and then also understand how you're going to be deploying these APIs. Right? Is it public cloud? Is it private cloud? Is it a hybrid? Is it a service mesh? Are they synchronous in nature, asynchronous in nature? Is it a back end for front end pattern? Do you need Sagas to choreograph the different APIs? These are all going to be considerations that you need to think about when you're actually going through your API lifecycle. Just another view of the stages. So again, testing, test as early as possible, right? Test those contracts to make sure that the contract is valid before you go ahead and implement all the backend logic behind that contract, right? And I also say, bring the security up front to this level um, before you actually get to the point where, you know, you de deploy everything and everything's running and you know, oh, well, yeah, I need security. So we should add that as an afterthought. Bring that as far forward as possible. Okay. Now, of course, there's many different ways that you're going to wrap your API program. So you tend to look at things like API gateways, API management platforms. When you're doing so, though, you want to look at a number of criteria. Right? So you want to look at the key capabilities you need to match and meet your business goals as defined by the business value that you've identified. Right? Then you want to take those, come up with a set of criteria that you need in order to make sure that if you're going after an API gateway or service mesh or an API management platform or whatever that is, you wanna make sure that all of that is aligned. Right? But the key is you're trying to create kind of this idea of a central location, maybe not physically deployed that way, but a single view into which you can come and see what's going on with your APIs, provide a single developer experience, uh, provide a developer portal so that people can do things like you know, get their own keys, play around with the APIs, do some testing, you know, all those kinds of things without actually having to go through and, and, and necessarily even talk to you in, in certain cases. Right? So that, that platform can form the kind of core foundational piece of an overall API program, at least from a technology standpoint. Now, when you look at what's coming, it's just I, APIs in many other different contexts, right? So, um, you know, we've, I've talked about this. There's things like APIs from an IoT context. There's things like AI ML for things like um, even, even using APIs to expose machine learning algorithms, uh, but also using APIs and AI ML together for things like API discovery. So I, if I have a whole bunch of APIs, which one is the best fit for me? And you can use AI ML techniques in order to determine that. You can also use AI ML to determine behavior. You know, what is normal for API data flows and access versus what is abnormal? And maybe a, an AI ML model can help, us help with that. Um, as I mentioned, APIs are not just about request reply, they can be event driven, and then they can be used in different contexts, right? Whether it's delivering data for the purposes of natural language processing, extended reality, even wrapping blockchain with APIs, looking at some of the emerging trends around autonomic computing, uh, and then all the standards that are related, right? Whether it's fire, open banking, a new distribution capability and the airline industry and so on. Right? So there's just a continual evolution here of APIs. And of course, you can layer these. So for example, you may be using data as APIs. Um, and so these, these elements that you are kind of you want to expose as data from the underlying data sources, these elements then can be exposed via APIs to API consumers. And now they're using data, let's say, to facilitate their data as APIs to facilitate a, a self-service analytics process. Right? So it's not just about a business function like um, you know, creating an order or things like that. It can actually be a way to augment your analytics platform uh, and be able to make, you know, again, multiple data sources look like they're a single data source, build different views, expose that as APIs, and then consume that in a variety of different form factors. 
That's a lot of a lot of different ways in which you can utilize these APIs. But really, it, it's around making sure that your API program is aligned to the goals of the organization. You understand what it is that you're trying to build, who you're trying to build it for. You've got the right people in place. You are following a API lifecycle and a development process that again fits within the guidance of your API uh, architect and the broader you know, organization as a whole. And, and you're really setting yourself up as that foundation for the future, right? Creating that best of breed innovation and facilitating a faster time to market, all part of your digital transformation strategy. So that's a little bit about the API program. And uh, I, I get to put in one, uh, one commercial. So uh, by all means, there's more details in my recently published book uh, around this. We go into a bit more detail in each one of these areas. Um, feel free, of course, to pick that up on, uh, on Amazon. And with that, that's the end of my session. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah, Nelson, we have one question for one uh, time for one question, actually. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, the question is, uh, how do you onboard uh, the business stakeholders into uh, making uh, API programs successful? Right. Yeah, I mean, and that's a key aspect of this. It, it can't just be technology for technology's sake. And so really what you need to do is get them on board early, try and understand their needs, try and understand what it is that they're trying to achieve as a, as a business. Um, and so, and then from there, you're trying to see what you can do to facilitate that, that interaction, if you will, both from, a, again, a technology and business value standpoint. So include them in the development of that business case, see what it is that they wanna measure, what are their business goals? And then how can APIs actually map back to enabling those goals? Um, and so, for example, maybe they want to expose data as APIs and allow more rapid access to information in their particular business. Uh, that could be for the purposes of being better able to provide cross-sell, upsell offers to customers or identify fraud or do predictive maintenance or whatever those things are. There's some set of business goals that eventually, as you drill down, APIs are going to enable that. So make sure they're involved. Make sure you put the metrics in place to measure that early show them how the APIs are enabling their business goals and, and continue to work with them. Yeah, I think there are great answers and that will help a lot of uh, API stakeholders into onboarding their business partners. Thank you very much, Nelson. You can now uh, disconnect your uh, screen uh, sharing and, and go back to your day work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank, you for thank you very much. And TIPCO has a booth at the event. So if you want more information about um, how to how to be successful with API programs? Don't hesitate to to stop by there. Thank you very much, Nelson.